Today I'm, I'm going to talk about outsourcing and high performance digitization and service centers and, and all sorts of things. And if you have any questions, you can ask me, just interrupt me. Um, um, I'm, I'm sorry about it, it is in English, uh, this presentation, but my Swedish has rusted so badly that it would be a torture for you. So I'm trying to be a little bit better in, in English. So, I will say a couple of words about the background of, of, of what we are doing. So in Finland, we have estimated that we have about 25 or 30 million specimens uh, which uh, are in, um, either in museums of natural history or in private collections. Um, and the heritage itself contains different types of geological uh, plant samples, but let's not forget also geological specimens. And they are not collected from, from Finland, or your collections are not collected from Sweden, but they are throughout the world. Now, the reason we don't know the exact number is that no one knows the exact number of specimens in the museums. It's a hopeless task because uh, only about 10 or 15 percent of these collections have been actually databased, and only 1 to 2 percent of the specimens have been imaged. Now, if you're thinking that this is a very low number, well, <laughs> it's actually quite average in, in the Western world. But of course, we could always do better. On the right, you will see images. They are all um, produced by Digitarium, and, and we have, based on copyright agreements, we have the right to use them in presentations, by the way. So, why these collections should be digitized? Um, these, especially uh, very fragile specimens, uh, need to be kind of imaged before it's too late. These collections are also vulnerable to pests in the museums, browsing when people are going through them, students and scientists. And also, of course, the databasing, which I mentioned earlier, it is a slight problem that it's not properly been done yet. But my personal view is that the most important reason why this collection should be uh, imaged and, and databased is to provide open access data for scientists and also for officials. For example, in Finland, we have a need to um, which is which the pressure comes from officials making decisions, for example, about land use. Um, they want to know what what kind of vegetation has been um, on that particular spot hundred years ago and and what kind of decisions they should make now about it. And also, uh, Karin was talking earlier about biodiversity, this is a hot topic today, but also other things like evolutionary studies and, and um, let's say, uh, climate change effects. These are the, the topics that this kind of information should, should be available. Let's not forget that, for example, climate change. We have been talking about climate change, but we, we have a huge amount of data in museums 100, 200 years ago, but at the moment, the scientists cannot use it. Um, and the, the images over there, the, the, <laughs> the butterfly on the, on the left, is, is a, it looks a bit sad. It's missing its legs and, and other worries. So it's quite a typical situation, actually, for, for, let's say, insects, that they are not in very good condition. The, the, the image on the right is just to remind you that, that we uh, have uh, the, the museums that have collections, let's say from areas that don't have any own collections and, and for some reason cannot provide open access data, is, is, um, we should think that it's our responsibility to produce that data. Um, I'm not sure whether I need to say that, this, but um, the the problem why the databasing and imaging has been so slow is often the lack of resources. Um, there are not usually staff that it's just doing digitization. There is not necessarily enough room and space to do it. They don't have proper equipment. 
and they don't have enough knowledge about standards and, and what kind of data the end users are wishing them to produce. Uh, often you will see a, a staff member in a museum who in the corner of the room has an old scanner and he or she is using it when he, he has time from his other duties. You can imagine that it's not very fast and it's terribly expensive way to do it. So in the world we have billions of specimens and at the speed we are doing digitization at the moment it would take thousands of years to do it. So something should be done. One of the problems is that when someone is doing digitization, they are thinking that, okay, I would, I would just scan it and, and that's it. And I will put it in Excel, the outcomes. Um, <laughs> it's not perhaps the best way to do it. And, and if we think about the scientific uh, point of view, it decreases the comparability of, those, of that data. And even now, often the museums are, are providing also only in-house data. They don't necessarily think that they should uh, put their data openly available. So our Ministry of Education and Culture learned about these problems and, and uh, the, the fact that the digitization is, is very slow. And they, made, they put um, on paper the aims that we have in Finland so by the year 2015, we should have an infrastructure for digitization of these collections, processes and research. By the year 2025, we should have the most important collections digitized. Notice, most important ones. And we should have guidelines for accessibility and long-term storage. Well, if I, I start from the third Point. We have nowadays long-term storage uh, systems ready. So in January this year, uh, they opened a an, an service uh, that all the data coming from whatever museum, it doesn't necessarily have to be natural history museum, it can be whatever organization presenting some heritage uh, data. Uh, we, are now, um, we are now having a service that is <laughs> Physically, it is in old paper mill in a small town in middle Finland, uh, huge server halls. So now we have the ways to, to, to storage this data long term. And of course, guidelines for accessibility are also, uh, how should I say it diplomatically? It is developing. <laughs> But anyway, I will concentrate on the first point, so uh, the infrastructure. In Finland, we have um, not perhaps made a, a serious decision, but we have slowly come to, to the conclusion that we should have a specialized service center for digitization of these huge collections. And it doesn't matter whether we are talking about mass digitization or large-scale digitization or high-performance digitization. The idea is the same, to, to digitize collections fast, efficiently and as cheap as possible. Uh, I'm representing Dig Digitarium, which is this new infrastructure. We, have, we are in uh, Eastern Finland, in Karelia. But we are working very closely in cooperation with the Finnish Museum of Natural History, which is in Helsinki University. We are also working together with Digital Library of Finland. And in Finland, the data, before it goes to long-term storage or Europeana, it meets in Digital Library. So all the data from cultural history, history museums and natural history museums go to Digital Library. So... Uh, tasks, what we are having and what we are doing is that we are developing methods and processes to enhance our, our uh, chances of, of doing as be be best as, as we can do to, to um, make the people in the museums and, and ministry as happy as possible. Uh, we are also doing research. So at the moment we are having two projects from funded by 
uh, European Commission for tools of processing data in more automatized manner. But we are our tasks also involve training of, of people to 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 make people to understand what digitization today is actually what what it should be. And we are training people to to not just to to realize that but also do it in practice. And f and last but not least we are we are providing museum services so we we can do digitization, um, especially mass di digitization, uh, for them. Um, funding is always important to, to mention. <laughs> uh, when we started this project, um, even though ministry set us high aims, it didn't provide us any money, which is quite typical. <laughs> um, in Finland, we don't get also any money for this kind of activities from the Academy of Finland. So <coughs> we started thinking that we we are now developing something new and, and what it would be possible to get money from European Union, regional funds and social funds. And, and in Eastern Finland, if you are wondering why we are there in the middle of nowhere, uh, <laughs> is that that we had ver very um, nice officials in in our decision organizations and, and they granted us funding. But they were clever enough to think what this kind of infrastructure actually means. So if you're building up a, a service center that is doing outsourcing for someone else, you don't just need the roof, the floor, um, equipment. You also need people who have a lot of knowledge and who can spread around. And it shouldn't be just an organization that it's inside a, a university. It should be open to the society around us because, let's face it, we are uh, offering services for the, for the whole community. That's the idea. It's not just to provide material for scientists and officials. It's for the <laughs> good of, of all. Uh, citizens, and um, that's why our um, tasks involve also things like tackling academic unemployment, which is a growing issue in Finland. I don't know whether the things are yeah okay, that but that's something kind of new thing, and and that's also what we are going to tackle, and and we have also other uh, regional uh, responsibilities. Anyway, this funding is aiming to the development of the infrastructure. Well, I said that now we know what we should be doing. We have aims and, and we have now funding and, and then we are far away. In, in our university, we don't have any museum. Uh, we are the only university. Our university is rather young. We don't have any museum. Uh, so. The idea is that the museums in Oulu, Jyväskylä, Turku, Helsinki, they are the ones that are taking care of the, the, the collections in the museums and they have also regional um, responsibilities. But we are the one that is taking care of the mass digitization. <laughs> so, um, outsourcing digitization is often a question of trust and emotions. <laughs> and in my experience, it mostly is a question of emotions. I put here pluses and minuses. Um, I'm not sure how you feel about this, but I have I have faced these same same issues in different organizations in different countries. <coughs> so the first thing which comes into mind when you are a curator in a museum is what happens to my collections or my specimens when I put them in a truck that goes to 100 kilometers away. Well, in our case, nothing bad happens to them because, of course, we, we know what we are doing. But that is the first thing that always is worrying people. That it's understandable, of course. Then they are questioning that how much does it cost to the museum to transport those uh, collections somewhere else? Uh, insurances, for example. Per sample, not much. We are talking about thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of samples in, in, in our case. 
Uh, specimens will not be reachable for a couple of weeks or months. Uh, I will give you an example. We, we uh, brought 30,000 herbarium samples from Helsinki University to Joensu to be digitized, and one week later, an old emeritus professor went to the uh, collection rooms and was almost, uh, well, shocked at least. <laughs> oh, where are, where are the samples? And he, he had not been there for a year before that. So um, I would say, <laughs> I'm not sure whether this is typical, but this is, of course, a problem. And this is something that we have to think about when we are thinking about the processes uh, that, that the specimens are not in our premises a pretty long time, that, that they come, they are digitized, and they go back. Are they going to take our jobs? Well, no, we are not interested in, in taking the jobs of, of museum staff. We are, just going to, we are just trying to do that part of the work that they don't have any time to do, and we are trying to help them. So it's also something that I have heard here in, in Sweden, and it needs uh, a lot of um, discussions between the parties. Um, of course, it is faster and less costly to do everything with masses than in in-house in projects. And as we are a service center, we uh, our efforts don't cause any extra work for the museum staff. All they need to do is to decide what collections and what specimens need digitization. We don't do that. They are the specialists in that. We can do all the rest. Uh, of course, we are using standards. We are really trying to increase the accessibility. And uh, something that we have noticed is that, that when then the people who are developing these processes and, and, and um, all sorts of um, ways to, to do this, we already have found out that we are uh, creating new kinds of technological innovations, and which is, of course, uh, something we Finns think that it's important that, that uh, we can kind of spread around in this, this area of, of research and, and um, technology. Here are our main principles that we employ. So we uh, offer services from door to door. Uh, we talk about processes, which are modular. But neither the processes, methods, equipment, applications or personnel are not fixed to any specific specimen type task or outcome. And that comes from the fact that when you create a process, and you make the models flexible, then it's, a, it's just a click and you can do something else in that phase of the process. Uh, we expect that the collection owners participate in our work. This is important. They know what is going on with their samples, and we know that they are interested in what, they <laughs> what we are doing, and uh, we have created ways how they can um, keep in touch of our work. We aim to low cost, high performance, and we do not do any collections management. We are not interested in, in, uh, in that. Here is a process, basic process. On the left upper side corner is a customer. He looks like a rich fellow. That's always a good thing. Uh, we go to his organization and, and he has chosen us uh, samples to be digitized. We take them to digitarium. We label every specimen. So identifiers are included. Then in the modular system, we decide what kind of imaging method we are using. So we are using automatic uh, imaging systems. Um, then 
after imaging the samples, physical samples go back to the customer. Image data continues in the process. We can do transcribing, so each uh, specimen has some kind of information. What is the species, where it has been collected, by whom and when. The um, persons in green are doing that. And the lady in red on the right is doing quality control. She's very tough. She's using ISO standard, so um, we don't accept any uh, transcribed data uh, when the, uh, the percentage of mistakes is below 5%. So it goes back to the transcribers to do it better. And when we accept the data, both images and the data, metadata, uh, it goes to the customer. And if you see from the right, the customer can, can uh, check the transcribing and he can also do verification of data if he likes. So he knows, he can see the images, he can either do or check the transcribing and then he happily gives us money for all this work. So when you're doing outsourcing, these are now what we have learned. The must-haves uh, we need clearly developed and written out methods for transportation of specimens, handling and, and freezing. We don't want to have any pests in our premises. So the, it's actually the, in the truck there is a, a freezing container. That's the most simple way to do the freezing. Uh, we have a written by us a printing application uh, ID printing application, it's flexible. Here is an example of one of the labels. It's uh, uh, Oslo herbarium sample. That's what they wanted it to look like. So our operator on the right side, right down, right down corner is, is including uh, the ID. Then it goes to imaging. We have developed this kind of automated imaging lines. Gaia is for herbarium samples. Depending on the amount of operators, the, here is the production per day. Uh, we would like to have it, this production per day to be higher. But there are two... Um, uh, first of all, you cannot just... like These are museum samples, you have to treat them nicely. That's the one thing. And the other thing is that um, our uh, image data goes directly to our server and there are at the moment certain limitations. But anyway, uh, we are quite satisfied at the moment of, of the speed. It could be a little bit higher. Then uh, another our invention is Buggy. Buggy is uh, actually just a smaller version of the Gaia. Specimen size is, is clearly smaller. And we have been doing um, beetles, so about 500 specimens per day per line to operators are needed. For both of these, uh, these uh, imaging lines, we have started from scratch. Um, there are no... Some, we, Especially in the case of Bucky, there is nothing you can buy from the shop. So, for example, before we could... Uh, those white pallets where the insect is, is flying on our conveyor belt, we had to first buy a 3D printer and print those pallets from plastic. And, and then we could have a proper way to do it. Um, Insects are, are fragile and, and 500 samples per day, we could be faster, but um, not much. Uh, by the way, with both of this uh, Gaia, and you also get the information from the labels. Uh, in the case of insects, often the, the data from samples is beneath the animal. So if you just image from above, you don't see the actual uh, data uh, connected to this particular species. 
Um, earlier we saw these really lovely uh, photographs of I insects uh, in the case of Bucky, the, uh, the um, points per inch or pixels per inch is about 3,500. So you can imagine the amount of, of data that it's been produced by, <laughs> by day. The process continues so that, uh, again, we have uh, created a, a web service called DigiWeb, where you can browse the images, you can do transcribing, and you can do the verification, and also the ISO acceptance uh, system. We have also... Um, as you can see, it's very, very small, but cheap if what uh, search, so we can uh, compare what we are. If, if the handwriting is really difficult, we can compare to cheap if material. And we have also other help desks here. Um, we can also administrate the system. So the idea is that the persons who are doing this, they are not in Joensuu, they are not even in Finland. They can do wherever they like, um, um, and whenever they can do it whenever they like. But of course, it would be nice that if they are doing it when we are at work, because there is also a message system, so they can ask our advice if there is something wrong. And of course, when we are at work, we can see what they are clicking and when. But anyway, um, this is uh, something that it's on daily use, and this is the way how the, the owner of the collections can also participate in the project. So, um, data that is being produced, it's, it's quite large. And of course, you have to have proper uh, interfaces for data deliveries. Cl clients can see the images 10 minutes after imaging. And through DigiWeb, they can, uh, they can attend to the process. And we are also developing um, ways how they can track the specimens through the ID throughout the uh, time the specimens are uh, with us. So, I'm soon finishing up. So, I hope you are now thinking that all oh, this looks very nice. But does it actually work? So I wanted to give you a, a, a reference. Our dear neighbors, uh, Norwegians, uh, they, they had a competition about uh, digitization of the general herbarium in, uh, in Oslo University, and, and we won that. And we have been uh, digitizing their collections uh, together with dig 4 skyas which is doing the transcribing part. We are doing the imaging and, and verifying part. And uh, actually, we are now in a brink of getting the option project to, I guess they have been happy of our work. So the idea is that we do most of the work, but uh, the specialists in Oslo University are, are taking part remotely using DigiWeb, for example. And um, the produced data this far is that we have been producing images about 10 terabytes and text data will be about 500 megabytes. Imaging has already been done for the first project and data transcribing, which is much slower, is still continuing. Uh, so I guess they were quite happy with the first project, but is this um, good business? <laughs> so this was a commercial project. Well, that's not exactly our focus to do a lot of money out of this, but it is nice to test other museums outside Finland uh, how our processes are working, and it seems that they are working pretty nicely. And finally, um, here is my motivation to this work. Uh, I'm also a biologist, and uh, I made my BST on how climate change is affecting northern plants. So, this is what I think about why I and we should digitize. I hope you find your own motivation to this work. Thank you. And, and uh, I have put leaflets on the table. So, if you are missing those, uh, please go to our website. We are European Union-funded projects. We have nothing to hide.
Thank you. <laughs>